Thank you. I'm Joshua Weiss. I'm a PGY4 resident at UT Southwestern. Uh, and I want to thank Sages uh, for giving me the opportunity to present and all my co-authors uh, as well. I have no relevant disclosures. So some background on the FES exam. It's uh, starting this year mandatory for all chief residents in general surgery to take and pass before graduation in order to sit for uh, their written boards. Uh, it consists of an 80 question uh, qualifying exam, uh, which is multiple choice, and a five part manual skills exam that has five components listed there, scope navigation, loop reduction, retroflexion, mucosal inspection, and targeting. Uh, UT Southwestern, we've known about this requirement coming down the pipeline and we've been doing some internal reviews of our own residency program to prepare for it. So uh, three years ago for the uh, 2014-15 cohort of chiefs, uh, we participated in a multi-institutional study with several other programs in Texas. Uh, at that time we had a clinical curriculum only, no simulation elements, uh, and so our residents did a fourth year rotation on GI endoscopy. Uh, and we had them all just go ahead and take the FES exam with vouchers provided from SAGES, and only 40% of them were able to pass. So knowing that in the future we were going to have to get all of our residents to pass the exam, uh, we followed that up with a study at only our institution, uh, and this will be a control group that I sort of compare our year two data to, so I refer to it as year one during the rest of the presentation. Uh, but we incorporated some benchtop simulators uh, at our simulation lab, and there's some pictures of those. Uh, to the right of the screen, and uh, our pass rate increased quite a bit. We got up to 87% that year, and we were very happy. Uh, based on some data we gathered during that study and some feedback uh, from the residents, we did a few modifications for uh, this most recent year, uh, and I'll refer to that as year two. And so I'll go over some of the modifications we made and some of the effects we saw when we did that. So a little more details about the year one and year two curricula. So first, uh, year one uh, was done, again, as sort of a controlled study environment. The advanced GI uh, bariatric fellow was the champion of the curriculum. And uh, after all of the R4s had finished their GI rotation, she took some volunteers from them and the chiefs to participate in her study. She got permission from SAGES to uh, get vouchers so they could all do a baseline pretest on the manual skills exam. Uh, she then had them trained to proficiency on these benchtop trainers and then sit for a real FES exam with the cognitive and skills portion. And then she administered a survey uh, to all of them, asking them what they felt about different elements of the curriculum. Uh, we followed that up in year two with more of sort of a real life type scenario where all of the residents who were on their GI rotation did the practice on the models uh, with a few modifications. Uh, and then they took their FES exam uh, whenever they felt prepared. That could have been during their rotation or after it, uh, and they all took a survey. So here's a little more details about some of the models that we use. Uh, the trust model is a benchtop model that uh, gives residents a chance to practice uh, retroflexion, and the proficiency standards are listed there. It was well received by the residents, uh, and we kept it in both years. Our operation game you saw a picture of earlier, and the proficiency standard is listed. Uh, that helps them practice tool targeting with the operation board game uh, and buzzes them if they miss the target. And then in year one, we had a uh, Kyoto colonoscopy model, uh, which uh, helps residents train in loop reduction. Uh, we didn't see a great improvement in loop reduction scores on our pre and post test in year one. And the residents uh, and the fellow who was proctoring them indicated that they had a hard time using this model. It was heavily dependent on the amount of lubrication used on the scope. It was just not very easy to use. Uh, so we got rid of that and replaced it with some virtual reality modules on the GI Mentor platform. Uh, we didn't have proficiency-based metrics for those cases. We just asked uh, the residents to do two repetitions on each of these specific colonoscopy cases, uh, which train in some loop reduction and some mucosal inspection skills. So these are our results uh, for year one and year two, uh, working our way down through the rows. So our first time pass rate in uh, year one, which is the post-test, so I suppose you could say that was the second test that they took, but uh, the first time pass rates was 87%. That trended down slightly in year two to 75%. Uh, that was not statistically significant. No one chose to retake the FES exam in that first year because it was not required 
probably. Uh, everyone has since retaken it in year two and they have all subsequently passed, so we have gotten all our residents uh, FES certified, which we're happy about. Uh, as I described earlier, uh, the year one participants took a lot longer from their GI rotation to actually take the FES exam, and that was because uh, the curriculum wasn't instituted until all of them had completed it, so it was mostly the nature of the design, uh, not uh, just something they chose to do. Uh, they spent a similar amount of time training on their simulators, and then notably in the second year, there were slightly lower numbers in colonoscopies and total endoscopies. Some of that's related to a few of our residents choosing to take the FES exam halfway through their rotation when they hadn't amassed a lot of their numbers. Um, everyone who took it before the rotation was over did in fact pass, uh, so it, it, the lower pass rate doesn't seem to be related to that. Uh, but even when you take out those residents, our, our numbers were a little lower. Uh, this is a graph of individual skill scores, and we obtained this with permission from the FES committee and SAGES. Uh, and as you can see, uh, the blue bars are the pre-test in year one, the red bars are the post-test, and then the green bars are our year two scores. Uh, the only significant result we saw was that loop reduction scores improved a lot when we switched from that Kyoto model in year one to the virtual reality uh, modules in year two. We saw a similar but non-significant trend in mucosal inspection scores. And then for scope navigation, retroflexion, and tool targeting, uh, we saw scores sort of trend up from pretest to post-test in year one and then go back down to about pretest levels uh, in year two. And I'll talk a little bit about that in the next slides. Uh, so overall, our year two pass rates uh, were 75% for first-time test takers, which is slightly below the national average. Our overall pass rate uh, is still up at 100%, so we're happy about that. Uh, why did our pass rates go down a little bit in year two? We did note some lower endoscopy numbers. Uh, it's possible there was less coaching. It wasn't a study environment. Our advanced uh, GI bariatric fellow graduated and moved on, and so we turned the curriculum over to our simulation proctors, uh, and uh, they may not have been as engaged as the bariatric fellow who had been doing the study. Uh, notably, the, the second year participants didn't have the opportunity to do a pretest, so uh, they hadn't seen the test before, and that might have given our year one participants a bit of a leg up. They were a little more familiar with the test content, and um, in addition to some of the training that they got, they just were more comfortable with that uh, testing environment. Uh, good news was we did see our loop production scores go up, which is something we had struggled with, and so we're pretty happy with the VR simulation models there. Uh, and another thing we noted in our analyses is that the time when uh, residents took the exam did not affect their pass rate, so it appears that the skills are pretty durable once acquired. Future directions for our program, we're working on more and more distributed clinical exposure, so our R1s and R2s now have endoscopy rotations to up our numbers and our exposure. Uh, we've purchased the new endoscopy training system, which is a benchtop simulator uh, with good evidence uh, from Matt Ritter. Uh, and we've opened some new VR modules. Uh, Dan Hashimoto and the MGH group uh, published a good study on uh, getting all the residents to pass with a proficiency-based VR curriculum, and so we're incorporating some of that for our residents as well. Uh, I'd like to thank Jessica Mission and the SAGES FES committee for providing us with a lot of this data, and I'm happy to take your questions.